Hi guys, Versus Education here with the ninth video of the Unreal Development Kit beginner series. And in this video, I'm going to be continuing where I left off previously uh, with lighting, in which I uh, essentially went over uh, initial lighting concepts uh, such as light maps, shadow maps, uh, the different types of light and uh, initial placement of those lights. And hopefully by that you should be able to create basic, basic point lights like this uh, in your scene to lighten it up. However, as I said, there is a whole bunch of different properties and settings that you can use to manipulate those lights further to make them more realistic and more suited towards your environment. As realism is essential and you're not necessarily going to have the same lights, uh, so the same, uh, same light emission from all the different kinds of uh, emitting objects that you have. So, you know, let's just go ahead and... Uh, play around with the properties on a point light which I have here so you know just get one if you haven't got one already and uh, select it and press F4 or just right click and press point light properties and you'll see we have this little dialogue that pops up with a plethora of uh, properties for us to uh, play around with keep in mind the properties may be somewhat slightly different for the different types of uh, light that you're trying to work with for example Spotlights are going to be having are going to have a dedicated area for the cone, uh, which I previously showed in the previous video, I think. Uh, so you can just pretty much change the area uh, of where the light is being emitted from. But uh, most of these other settings, which I'm going to be going over for the point light, are universal and should apply to uh, uh, all the other kinds of light. So. Firstly, we have the radius, which is pretty self-explanatory if you know what the word radius means. It essentially uh, changes the area, the lighting, uh, the size of the area the lighting will affect. So if I change this to a thousand, you can see the uh, the area that the lighting is going to affect is slight, uh, significantly larger. Whereas if I change it to something like 200, uh, it's not going to be very big, it's going to be very small, and you'd most likely use this for some kind of slightly smaller light like these uh, little yellow ones that I have here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these, and I'm going to change these to a nice, lovely, small 256, because they're small, there's not too much being emitted. You know what, let's just go ahead and play with this value. You're most likely going to have to play with all of these different values, uh... Uh, so that they work best with your with your objects that you actually have with you, and uh, just sort of get a sort of happy medium where it looks realistic and it actually lights up your environment the way you want. I'm not necessarily going to go over fall off as uh, you know it's slightly more complex. You don't necessarily need to worry about it. But uh, next up, we have the brightness. It's pretty self-explanatory too. It just essentially changes how bright your light is going to be. So if I change this to uh, a thousand, prepare your eyes to be eye raped. And there we go. Really, really bright, really light uh, white. Whereas if I change it to something like a 0 0.5, it's very dull. It's not very bright. 0 0.1, there's almost nothing there. And you should generally get the picture. Seeing as it's a nice, big nice lovely light tube i'm going to set this to something like a5 underneath this we also have the light color pretty self-explanatory if you know what color means it essentially changes the color of the lighting uh you can see i've actually got different colors of lights for the different emitters you can see this one's sort of a bluey uh sort of a bluey uh white so i can actually select this from the little color picker that i have here Let's just make this nice and bright and there we go, sort of light blue. We can also use this lovely little color picker tool in the form of like sort of eye drop to select the color manually from that emitter so it is incredibly realistic, uh, a bit like that. And I did the same for these ones here. So if I go to the light color, I can use the eye dropper tool and select it manually. If I go and choose the black here, it's not really very nice and realistic, but if I go and choose and hover over to my yellow, so I can capture the best bit possible. It uh, looks nice and realistic just the way I want it. We also have a bunch of uh, checkboxes here. Only the main ones here apply. Uh, 1, 2 and 3. Uh, for toggling specific things on and off. The first one's just the whole light uh, enabled. You can check that. To toggle it on and off. Which is pretty... Uh, easy to see what it does. We also have cast shadows. Uh, you can see a shadow there. A shadow is essentially uh, where 
it's slightly darker because there's no lights there in uh, relativity to the surrounding area. We also have dynamic. This is uh, for turning on uh, dynamic shadows. If you have a uh, sort of light that's going to be having uh, moving objects nearby, you might want to turn on uh, uh, whether or not it should have could sh it should cast shadows from dynamic objects. For example, if uh, that light's going to be affected by the play, you might want to turn that on so the lights can be uh, so the shadows can be updated dynamically. We don't necessarily need to worry about all of these other uh, settings, but feel free to look through them if you really want to uh, play around with them. Also, we have uh, light shafts. These are pretty sweet, pretty sexy, and I advise you play around with them as you can get some pretty cool effects from them. So, what is a light shaft? There is a pretty mu uh, there is a scientific name to these called some like crepuscular rays. I'm not too sure of the exact name, but uh, let's go and give you an example. Uh, of what a crepuscular ray is. It's essentially like a go uh, a god ray, sort of light ray from uh, the heavens or whatever you want to call it. But you know, it works really well with fog and uh, when there's some sort of object obscuring your view, like shadow, uh, sorry, clouds or something like that. So let's go ahead and give you an example inside of UDK itself uh, from the scene that we created previously. If you look up here, we've got a bunch of extra light around the emitter itself being emitted. If we go in uh, exp uh, ex was it obscure our vision, uh, you will see that uh, ray in effect slightly better, uh, like so. There you go, you can see it's sort of coming out and is really visible. If I turn that light shaft value up, we will see that in uh, a slightly better form. Let's just go ahead and go to the properties, scroll down to light shafts, and uh, let's turn this motherfucker up. I should probably apologize for swearing, but I'm too much of an I'm too much of a uh, a hurtful person. Let's turn the bloom uh, up. There we go, and I'm gonna turn up. Uh, we go turn it up, nice and huge. And if we go and obscure our vision, we should be able to see those uh, sort of light shafts in full effect, uh, which looks pretty sweet. There we go. You know, I can't necessarily get a good view, but uh, let's just go ahead and press play and shoot something at my son like so. You can see those rays quite clearly on uh, the sort of emissive particle systems that we have here. So let's go back into our tutorial and go off of, uh, and let's go over the last setting that I wanted to go over, which is uh, light, uh, sorry, uh, reflection, image-based reflection, sorry. There we go. So let's go ahead and find this. Image-based reflection is essentially sort of uh, like non-real-time uh, reflection uh, that will only show uh, light. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an example from the game that uh, me and my team are working from to show you. Uh, one second. Finding this on my other screen. So let's bring this up here. You can see we've got some sort of... Uh, projected specular onto the ground here, which uh, is based on a pre-captured image, uh, which is pretty sexy and sweet. If you check that option for uh, allows image-based reflections, uh, you can essentially turn off whether or not you want that light to be shown in that uh, captured image for your reflection. This is the main uh, different lighting properties that I wanted to go over in uh, here. And the last thing I want to go over is uh, adding in a skybox. You should have the main essential lighting properties and that should be everything for lighting. So let's go ahead and add a skybox. What is a skybox? This is essentially your sky and this will have things like clouds, it will have the sort of blue stuff in the background. Because at the moment, if you're in a blank map like this, it's all going to be black, and that's not very realistic. You're going to have some sort of color, you're going to have things like sky, uh, stars, and so on and so forth. So to add one in, just go ahead and go to Static Meshes and type in Skybox. And hopefully you should find one. To press all assets, uh, it's probably probably going to need a space, and you should see a bunch of preset skyboxes. Obviously, you can create yourself uh, can create yourself one. All is essentially a sphere with uh, sort of texture or material on it. In uh, most cases, 
this is often actually uh, animated so it looks realistic and sexy so let's just go ahead and add in this one you probably won't have this one by default as it is uh, made for a game that I'm working on and uh, yeah, but there's a bunch of preset ones like nights, uh, sort of uh, like a night one. There is one for daytime and so on, which you can actually see in use in uh, in in um um <laughs> in uh, in the templates that you have when you go to file new and so on. But uh, this is essentially what a skybox is. It adds extra life to your scene as uh, seen there. I'm going to rotate this so the sunset is in direct view of uh, the player's peripheral vision. Uh, a bit like that. This should be nice. If we actually have a, di uh, a dominant directional light, this will actually be projected onto the uh, skybox that we have. So let's just go ahead and drag this up a little bit. And if we build our lighting, hopefully it should be projected on. I apologize for the um, long delay for the building time. I'm too lazy to actually sort of crop out the uh, the building time because I'm a very lazy person. But, you know, it should be all worthwhile. And you can actually listen to me ramble on in the meantime. And there we go. We actually can see that uh, the dino ah, the dominant directional light has uh, made the scene outside slightly brighter. However, for some reason, it's not necessarily being projected, but uh, in most cases, it will. And hopefully, that should be pretty much everything I wanted to cover. So, thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And make sure you check out uh, the next video. Goodbye.